Transformers characters have always been influenced by humans. Most stand on two legs, have two arms, have noses, mouths, facial hair, and lips. And it can't be helped that they are voiced by humans, so very easily, gender is attached to them. Unfortunately, we see many of these similarities go unquestioned because they seemed so normal to the viewer. Back in the day, it was never questioned why the robots would use he with each other or have girlfriends. It is only with certain similarities that people begin standing up to claim that it is too much. What we need to understand by the end of this video is that when building the universe of the Transformers, nothing makes more sense than including these LGBT topics. The robots just cannot possibly be straight, and they cannot be strictly gay either. They are very fluid beings who would be capable of getting romantic with any other bot regardless of their gender identity. The reason LGBT topics are vital here is because it helped everyone realize how nonsensical the continued straightness of the robots was. It also put into question what makes a robot a he or a she. Recognizing all this actually improved their alienness by making their culture so fluid from the start, very suitable for the Transformers race. At the same time, all this is very understandable to the human audience because we have these things as well, just not full scale. So you can see that since we've broadened Cybertronian culture and opened up new possibilities for plots, this is something that should be celebrated instead of scorned. We are about to go into depth about what these robots are, but for now hold on to this idea that they cannot be strictly straight or gay. So there are truly people who refuse to read IDW because they know it includes same gender couples. This is a real shame because the comics are quite good. Naturally, the comics can be critiqued for many things, but the romance complements the dark stories being told. More Than Meets the Eye in particular carefully builds its romances and makes them relevant to the plot, while at the same time they are quiet enough to keep the genre unchanged. That being, the comics are not part of the romance genre but are merely stories that contain instances of character love. We also need to talk about these topics because despite decades of heteroromantic couples on television for Transformers, there has never been on-screen same-gender affection or relationships in the last 40-ish years. Some cartoons do not focus on any romantic interests, but some very recent ones definitely do, yet still within the bounds of homo-romanticism. We also still see some very restricting design choices and gender inflexibility, but more on that as well. Finally, there is a lot of hypocrisy that people are unaware of when they begin to complain about LGBT topics entering Transformers. Mainly the fact that romance has existed in Transformers since the 1980s. Some shallow romances, some very in-your-face romances, some romances that are hugely important to the plot of the show. However, these romances were either adored or ignored by the people because of the straightness of the pairing made it seem so normal. Once the characters of the same gender started pairing up though, only then did I see heads turn and complaints arise. Let me provide some prominent examples to start us off. Very funny. And this is Ariel. And keep away from her. She's my girlfriend. Don't listen to him. He's just a jealous type. In the 1980s, female Transformers are introduced but are all immediately paired off. They do not get deep backstories and their relationships are just to be accepted. And you better stay close to me! No, you'd better stay close to me. In Beast Wars, Tigertron and Air Razor openly express their love, and Silverbolt and Black Arachne's romance is a huge part of the show. But I like being a bad girl. And you know something else? Somewhere deep beneath this squeaky clean armor plating of yours, I think you like it too. Hmm. Hmm. I know your heart, and when I look into it, I see no evil, only love. Sappy as always. What did I ever see in you anyway? Oh yeah, I remember. I will ever be your champion, my lady. Oh, the way you talk. <laughs> Transmetal power. Better get used to it. Later on, we uncomfortably get Cheetor crushing on Black Arachnia even though she is Silverbolt's partner. That didn't even count Quick Strike's incessant flirting. Hey, whoa! Uh, hi. What is this, a military base or a daycare center for under-evolved bipeds? Sorry, they're just here until we can find their... 
drive. Let go of me. That load becomes too much for you, sugar bot. You just let me know here. All right, sweetie. Yeah. <laughs> In Beast Machines, the romance continues, but we also have Rat Trap and Botanica pairing up. Arachnia. Oh, dark poison of my heart. There's only one Transformer who could say something that corny with a straight face. It is I, my love. Name Sprouts! So I'm a tree hugger. Deal with it. Other shows also dedicate their female robots to being romantic partners of others, such as Clipper in Transformers Victory. <laughs> Following this trend, Black Arachnia in Transformers Animated is a huge love interest. Her very presence makes the male characters weak, and characters such as Grimlock are romantically interested in her for no other reason than because she is female. The live-action Michael Bay Transformers movies are full of romance and unnecessary sexuality, not always with the robots, but pairings between the humans. What we see is that straight couples have been more problematic than the LGBT couples have ever been. They have made the female robots love interests for other characters and made their roles centered on that. But the point has been made, you have always seen romance in Transformers even though it is in the action genre. And because only now one is making complaints, I must address the hypocrisy. Now let's tackle the complaints. They are robots, they can't be gay. Why are they forcing LGBT into Transformers? So what did I mean when I said that the Transformers robots cannot be straight or gay? This can be very puzzling. In most Transformers stories, the robots do not reproduce. A godlike being generally is responsible for their creation, especially in modern storytelling. In that case, if the robots are not sexual and lack genitalia, why would they get into relationships? Firstly, allow me to introduce you to the scientific term of asexuality. This means exactly what I was describing, in which the robots do not reproduce and are not sexually attracted to other robots. So the robots are asexual, but this does not mean they would not be interested in forming relationships. Above the notion of sexuality is romance, the warm and fuzzies, and love for other being. For you to best understand this topic is to compare it to humans. Allow me to give an example so that you understand what modern Transformers storytelling is trying to tell you. Asexuality in humans, generally speaking, means a lack of sexual attraction. I am one of these people and I was born unable to feel sexual attraction. However, I am still a fully emotional being and I am interested in forming a relationship with someone I like. I still love the idea of having someone special, living with them and doing fun things. I still enjoy hugs and such because not all acts of affection are related to sexuality. For example, you show affection to your pets, friends, and family members without sexual attraction. In summary, not being sexual still allows you to feel love and enjoy affection. The only strange thing I admit is that the robots have been shown kissing, which is a very particular human act that is not even universal across cultures. I'm not sure why they would want to touch face holes, but as we have been seeing for decades, it is nothing new that IDW invented. We know these robots are very emotional. They fight wars and go into rages, they have friendships and fight to protect each other. They are sad when they lose someone, and they can even get post-traumatic stress. They are very social species just like us, and we see them hug each other and give comforting touches. It is completely understandable that now and then, a robot that cares very much for another might want to spend more time together and be more affectionate. We are just about to go into the topic of gender, but before we do, just know that when this increased attachment for a robot occurs, it is based on personality and connection. You see now that Transformers being romantic makes perfect sense because we established them to be caring social life forms. An extra step to consider is that some of the robots may be aromantic, which means that they simply do not crave that level of partnership. Friendship may make them fully satisfied. I have an example of this in the lore book for Transformers Prime. Solus and Megatronus are a romantic couple, even using the word love with each other, although some of their comrades simply do not understand these strong emotions and are content with just their friendships and hobbies. Consider next that nothing is binding the Transformers to pairing off into couples only. 
perhaps strong affectionate feelings might arise for multiple bots they want to spend more time with. This concept is known as polyamory among us humans and means relationships of more than two consenting members. This idea would also make perfect sense for this emotional race of robots. So, two notes. The sexuality of the robots is asexuality, which means they do not feel sexual attraction. They cannot be heterosexual, homosexual, bisexual, etc. Romance is unrelated to sexuality, and so the robots would realistically be able to become attached to each other. However, not all robots may want this, and some might be in relationships of more than one member. These relationships depend on personal love and are not motivated by gender. For Transformers Prime, when asked if Knockout is gay, the answer is a joke and not to be taken as a canon answer. Knockout is gay, isn't he? <laughs> I, I, I didn't know they had those designations on the Cybertron. The bots don't necessarily have, they don't have to reproduce, so they don't have to really have that kind of thing going on. There was a glitch in the all sparks. The AllSpark, as we know, does not actually glitch like a computer. However, the joke is not a very good one, because it can imply that Knockout's flirtatious behavior was a mistake. No one would have asked about him if he had only flirted with the female characters. All Cybertronians, including Knockout, followed the above statements. Knockout is only unique in his playfulness and appreciation of appearances. Sweet rims, 24 gauge. You're real heavy duty. Though I must confess, I have always admired your lustrous finish. Next complaint is Transformers don't have gender. They don't have genitals, so they can't have gender. Well, our next topic explains the confusion over sex and gender. So we just finished describing that the Transformers lack reproductive organs. They do not have biological sexes, and that is by the rules of canon. However, the robots still use he and she to describe themselves. This is their gender identity. For a long time, no one thought to explain why they would use he and she because it was assumed by us humans to be so natural. How would a non-reproducing species know what male and female was? So modern storytelling began to take this into consideration, especially in IDW 2005 comic series. It is also tackled in the lore book for Transformers Prime, The Covenant of Primus. Before contact with alien species, the Transformers did not call each other he or she, but had a gender-neutral term in their language. For those who saw my video about language, you may remember that we need to consider language translation. When the Cybertronians are on their own planet, they are not speaking English. What we hear is a translation for us, and that would take into consideration translating the gendered pronouns. IDW's first comic series had Cybertronians using he all around, while colony planets used she and he because they had interacted with aliens. They saw gender differences and adapted to them, and some robots in particular really enjoyed these concepts. You could always question IDW for the idea that it made all its aliens resemble male and female humans on Earth. I do not believe IDW tackled gender perfectly, but the point it was trying to make was that the robots chose gender based on what they felt suited their personalities. They made the robots using she share a particular spark type. Gender is about perception as well, how they want to be seen. This accounts for some characters like RC, Anode, and Lug ditching the he pronouns because they like the concept of femininity more. RC and Anode have even modified their bodies because they liked it more. A character like Arachnid in Transformers Prime seems to very much like her femininity, although other Transformers might not really get what she is talking about. Fits. You know, a girl can never have too many accessories. You were a Decepticon once. We could bring the prize to Megatron together. But there is yet another layer to consider here. Their gender is not based on their body shapes or their voices. Traditionally, because of the age of the franchise, the female robots looked very feminine with even metal boot plates. There's no issue showing robots who just happen to have those body types. But the franchise has realized that the best way to show that their gender is their personality is to mix up the body types. The show that embraced this idea was Robots in the Skies 2015. But Cyberfirst is also noteworthy for making a standard seeker body type and marking its females by their lips. The character Alpha Strike and Clobber, just like Strongarm in Robots in the Skies, show your average big hulking robot identifying as she. Bumblebee is also noteworthy for Shatter, while IDW's newest comic series has done the best job at depicting gender with a huge female cast and a variety of appearances. At such a point, you may wonder, why bring this up at all? 
Well, it is important to break the stereotypes of what a male and a female can be, and when we think to ourselves that we can make the robots look however we want, we can start making more creative designs. We can get more original characters like Clobber, who is quite different from the other female characters we have seen before, while being entirely realistic as well. We can get a slim Starscream in heels, which better suits his skittish personality. There's more to say about female representation, but I will have to slate that for another video. Ultimately, you just need to realize that gender is presentation, and whether the robots have genitals or not, they have gender. But you also need to realize the fluidity of their gender and how acceptable it is. For now, we see these characters as particular genders because they've been interacting with us, but let us propose that they are on a different planet speaking a different language. Suddenly, you can see how they adapt and take on different gender identities. You may also consider races that lack male and female, or have something more. In the most logical way of thinking, you realize the robots would not actually have a fixed gender. They would continuously find the genders and pronouns they best like with whomever they meet. IDW went into depth to explain he and she, but in their new comic series, they simply included he and she without explanation. And sometimes, minimal explanation is the best way to go about it. We might then consider everything we are reading to be a translation, like it was said to be in Transformers Prime's lore book, The Covenant of Primus. If the robots encountered aliens, they would quickly state the point about adapting to alien genders, and almost everything is covered. There's only one last point that the comics have not addressed yet, what if, even while interacting with humans, a robot feels both male and female or neither? We already have this concept among humans, but we have yet to see any robots taking up a gender-neutral pronoun like they. But based on what we have discussed, it would make perfect sense. One final note to consider is that it is in no way scandalous to regender traditionally male characters. We know that originally, Transformers were almost all male-gendered. However, there is no reason for them to have a certain voice type and use he all the time. Including more female characters also comes with the advantage of appealing to the female audience of Transformers, who I definitely know exists because of my experience in the fandom. There was nothing but surprise and delight in my mom's voice, a non-Transformers fan, when she accidentally saw a picture of Windblade as I flipped through a book. We never asked why the robots are male, but we unfairly asked why they were female as though it was abnormal and exceptional. Let us not be concerned when Skywarp and Acid Storm change gender in Cyberverse, and Clobber arises as a new female Lugnut. When something makes Transformers fresher and brings the audience more enjoyment, I see no reason why anyone would protest. So to recap, the robots do not have biological sex or genitals. However, they have gender because it is a way of describing themselves and being perceived by others. Gender does not rely on voice or body type. They could use or change pronouns however they please. Gender is potentially changeable depending on who the robots interact with. In connection to the discussion on romance, you realize now that the flexibility of their alien gender means that they cannot be attracted to any gender specifically. You won't have any ladies men if their gender isn't based on bodies and can vary quite easily. You won't have a knockout pursuing only the male robots, but flirting with everyone he wants to, just as he did in Transformers Prime. When it comes to falling in love, they would not consider gender and would never ever make a remark about same gendered partners. This was precisely the logic James Roberts had when he designed the homonormative Transformers society. His point was for no robots to ever comment on Rewind and Chrome Dome's homo romanticism or anyone else's. When you read IDW, the romances simply happen without any attention ever being put on the couple's gender. This is exactly how it should be regarding what their race is. Let the fandom just understand some more things before we move on. These are a few habits and beliefs that I have encountered before. Just because a character is in a relationship with one gender does not mean they are only attracted to that gender. Tigertron would not be straight for being with Air Razor and Knockout would not be gay for being with Breakdown. They are all potentially capable of being with any gender and would have still formed their relationships even if a character's gender was swapped. The same applies to bisexual people in real life, whose sexualities remain unchanged even when in relationships. To assume otherwise is what we know as bi-erasure. You do not need to modify characters' body types or canon genders to make your ships. This is a habit that changes the gender of characters in a same gender relationship to make people more comfortable with it, 
one may also draw a character to look more feminine in order to place gender roles into their relationship. The reason this is wrong is because it assumes the original genders in the relationship we were given were flawed and unacceptable. What should also be considered is that having feminine features does not reflect a gender. I mean, we've also seen facial hair equivalents on bots that still use she, and even if we put breastplates on a robot, it would not take away from their male identity. In all cases, be open to interpretation because the robots are way too fluid to label as just one thing. You now have a thorough understanding of the way romance and gender works in Transformers. Hopefully, this has sufficed to counter-argue a statement such as, romance doesn't belong in Transformers. But let's add a little bit more to address this because normally people complain about romance when same-gender couples are mentioned. After all, I have never seen such complaints when it was just the straight opposite gender couples on screen. But if you despise all romance equally, it is all good and fair. It's the lack of consistency I've seen that is concerning. And honestly, romance is everywhere, even in superhero movies. It does not distract from the action, and potentially it raises the stakes. The romance within IDW never took over and was used to motivate characters and tear them to shreds when their partner died. You have no shortage of violence and action in Transformers, and the increased character emotions can make your stories better. I am sure you have seen statements resembling, they just threw in gay characters but didn't flesh out the ships. The reason this is a problematic belief is because some ships were very fleshed out, but, and listen closely here, but not all ships that appear need to be fleshed out. There isn't time to flesh out every background relationship and our main ones are important. There is nothing inherently wrong in throwing in background couples because that is exactly what shows do all the time. Kids shows, adult shows, have parents and couples who appear already together or suddenly fall in love very fast. However, this multitude of relationships is seen as normal and no one demands that they justify each couple's existence. Here we see that it isn't the lack of developed same-gender couples that bothers them, but the fact that they are there itself. As an extension, here is the complaint, Transformers is for children, why are they putting LGBT stuff in here? This is baffling, kids shows most definitely show adult couples and people falling in love. Love is surely something allowed to exist in kids shows, but for some reason, the gay romance is perceived as more sexual and vulgar. This is not true, but it is very common for people to get vulgar about the IDW romance, about how they don't want these humping and horny robots in the Transformers, when of course their love is nothing but asexual and affectionate. The fact of the matter is that LGBT people exist and kids are going to see them in real life. We put plenty of real life in the shows, and limiting LGBT couples is being unfairly picky and keeping minds closed. They politicize Transformers is another statement often made. Now being a minority or respecting minorities is not a political debate where all opinions are valid. Disrespect and discrimination is wrong, period. And refusing to let the robots date robots of the same gender does not make sense for their race and it is just restricting because some people find it icky. But let us propose that the robots were sexual beings with reproductive organs. Even in that case, there is no reason still to not include LGBT characters and give them the panel time Rewind and Chrome Dome or Cyclonus and Tailgate got in IDW. These people exist in real life, but have lived seeing thousands of movies and books telling straight couples stories. When at last characters like them get the spotlight, only then people start complaining about it being in one's face. Nevertheless, these stories are not focusing on gay aspects at all. They are just trying to tell you a compelling story of love in a scary universe that includes loss and incredible horror. The only ones making it an issue are those who cannot look past our main character's genders to pay attention to the story itself. We aren't supposed to give a damn, and I hope that after everything I have explained, we learn to just see everything as normal and start appreciating and criticizing other elements in the shows and comics. Optimus, I didn't return to save a life, only to lose the one I care most about. We were on the verge of greatness. We were this close.